Hey guys, I'm Morgan McBride. I'm a DIY and home decor blogger. I blog full time and I love SEO. I've created a few Skillshare videos about SEO in your blog and this is a really fun, easy, quick takeaway one about using SEO and the free information that Google gives you to create content that is instantly going to rank high. So a lot of people have trouble coming up with content ideas for their blog. And people fall into two categories. Either they want to be really successful, they started their blog to be business to make money, and they don't know what to write about to make money. Or you have been blogging forever, this is me, and you write about what you love. And we blog about home decor, and it's like we want to build a bunk bed for our cat. That's what that is. And um, we want to blog about it. And it doesn't matter that nobody's searching for it, but it does matter if nobody's searching for it if you're trying to make money. So to find a nice balance between doing what you love and making money, you need to use a good content strategy. I'm going to show you today how I use Google Search Console, which is a free tool provided to you from Google. And I go in, I look at things that already exist on my blog that are doing well, and I use that to come up with ideas for new blog posts to create. And you're going to take those ideas, and I like to call them content trees. So you have your main post that's doing well. And we're going to create branches off of that with sort of subtopics that are related that Google wants you to write about. They're telling you, please write these posts. And then for you, you can repeat this process for each of those branches once you get that written and branch those out. And off each branch, you might have a main post. You might have a how-to. You might have a Google or Amazon affiliate link up that's just things people can buy. You might have a roundup of other projects off the web. You can really get very meaty and very branchy with your trees and that is going to establish extreme expertise. We're picking things that Google already says you know what you're doing. Let's say not only do we know what we're doing, we know so much about this topic. We have 20 posts about it and that's what we're going to do today. So let me stop talking and let's just do it going to do is to find the posts on your blog that are already doing well that we're going to use to brainstorm more content ideas. So start by just navigating to Google search console. You might have this bookmarked wherever you have it or you can just Google Google search console. If you have not already set up your site on search console, you're going to want to go ahead and pause this video. Just Google search for the latest instructions from Google. I don't want to show you in case it gets outdated to set your site up on Search Console. This is a 100% free tool. So when you come in you see this overview tab and it's automatically showing three months 90 days of performance data and we are going to go in just to the search results section. And I'm just going to go over all the different parts of Google Search Console and then we'll dive into how to find the best posts to focus on for creating new content. So up here on the top we have the search type. Your choices are web, image, or video. I primarily use web because my site is written blog posts. If you're focusing on images or videos, obviously you check the one that best applies to you and your work. The date is the last three months automatically. You can see some different choices in here or you can set custom. So we're gonna look back at historical data to determine what is currently doing well on our site and use that to determine what to create going forward. Three months is a good chunk of data to look at at a time. But what I will warn you is it depends on what time of the year you are looking at and what type of business you have. For example, I have a DIY craft website and we have really different content around Christmas and Thanksgiving time that does really well compared to the rest of the year. So if I'm looking three months back and that's including November and December, it's going to kind of skew my data for year round. So keep that seasonality in mind depending on your business. If you have travel and a certain kind of travel is popular a certain time of year. Just keep that in mind. You could set your last three months, six months. If you want to come in here and you wanted to focus on, I'm going to go ahead and create some Christmas content. 
then go ahead and set this to October 1st through December 31st. So you're looking at that season. Just keep the seasonality in mind and pull about 90 days worth of data. Down here, there's a few more things you can pull in and we'll look at these in a minute. Query is the search that people are typing into Google. Page is your page of your blog. So this would be the blog post. Country is obviously the country where people are located who are doing the searching. Device is gonna tell you if something is mobile or um, tablet or desktop searches. And this could make a difference if you are focusing on one or the other for advertising. For example, a lot of bloggers make more money on desktop traffic. So if you were interested in getting more desktop traffic, maybe you wanna see what desktop users are landing on your site. Just an idea. And then search appearance includes um, how-to rich results. If you use how-to schema, rich results, reviews, videos, or web light results. So if any of these apply to you, you can filter to them. I use a lot of how-to schema, so I look at that sometimes, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to leave it at rich results. I'll just continue your orientation of the search results page on Google Search Console. Automatically it has selected this total clicks and total impressions. Clicks are people who are clicking from the Google search to your site. Total impressions is the number of times that your site is shown in a search result. Does not mean that it was clicked. Click-through rate is the math between the two of those, dividing your clicks per impression. And then your average position is where a post falls on Google. So you can see average position 22 would be on the top of page 3. One thing I will say is that this is very skewed on a post by post basis. So don't really take this average position for your whole site as a whole too far to heart. I mean, you want it to obviously be improving, but 22 doesn't really mean a lot now compared to when we get down to a page by page level. The queries tab, once again, is showing. These all correspond up here to remember the options we had under new. But query is what people are typing in on Google that ends up with them seeing your site. Pages are the pages of your site. So these would be different blog posts if you're a blogger. Countries, you can see ranked where people are searching from. Devices, you have mobile desktop or tablet. You can see who's landing on your site. Search appearance, once again, shows all those different schema types and see how people are ending up at your site, see how to really drives traffic to my site, and then dates, this is a day by day. This tab, not really useful to me and what I'm doing, but it is there for you. All right, so that is a general orientation of your Google Search Console. Once again, this is a free tool with Google. You just have to set it up once. There is an export button here too. So you can export this to a spreadsheet. I like to use Google Sheets. If you like, I suggest you kind of drill it down a little bit before you export it, but we will do that now. All right, now we are going to see how to use this data on Google Search Console to pick a topic to write more blog posts about. So I haven't changed anything. I'm still in here. My only filter is the last three months. This is a reminder, set those 90 days to be 90 days on a calendar that you want to kind of replicate the seasonality of. I have all four of these options toggled and selected at the top. Um, you don't really need the click through rate if you don't want it, um, but I will have all four of them checked just for the purpose of this. We're going to scroll down and we are going to go to pages and this will be showing you in your designated time range what has got what pages have gotten the most clicks from Google. So we are going to look at clicks and we are going to look at impressions and we are going to figure out how people are getting to your site. So how to make a squirrel picnic table is a post that has been doing well for us during this quarantine time. So I'm going to click on there and it automatically switches you over to the pages tab. And you can also see that up here at the top, page became a filter. And so now we are just looking at this one page. So you can see for each of these tabs, that page filter is gonna stay at the top. And I can see, you know, people are in the United States, people are on mobile, people are finding my web light results. 
maybe they're not. Um, you can see it by date if you like this tab. I'll never look at this, but you can see kind of this has been just sort of a viral push. This is a post that we published about, you can see however many days ago, 10 days ago, and that's how well it did instantly. Um, so now we're going to go back to queries, and this is where we're really going to focus. Queries is what people are typing into Google to find this blog post. There are 693 queries that this blog post has appeared as a potential result for someone on Google in the last three months, in the last two weeks, really. It's a new post for us. I'm going to extend this to 500. That's the most you can get per page. And now I'm going to look and see what we are ranking for. Um, 500. It's actually scrolling kind of slow. I might not should have done that, but that's okay. We'll be okay. Um, all right. So you can see it is sorted by clicks currently. So scroll, picnic, table, plans. We rank one and a half. So we go back and forth between another blogger for position number one and position number two. And you can see how many impressions that has. So obviously... I'm not going to write a new blog post called Squirrel Picnic Table Plans because I'm already crushing that one. What I might do, however, is come over here to position and see how that arrow appears. I'm going to click position and now it has everything listed in reverse order. So now we're seeing the things that I rank for, but I rank really high or low, however you want to see it. The number is very big. No one, uh, ranking number 101 is ranking on page 10 at least with all the different videos and feature snippets, probably more like page 15. So this means that when people search for plans for squirrel feeder, they're never going to find me, but Google showed me one time to somebody. So I'm going to write this down and these are all going to be potential ideas for blog posts. So we have plans for a squirrel feeder plans for a wood picnic table, build a picnic table, picnic table bench plans free, plywood picnic table plans, building plans for a picnic table. So you can go through here and see already like we made a squirrel picnic table, but now Google thinks we should also make a picnic table plan. So keep scrolling down. Um, so we have our scroll feeder and we have picnic table are two things and picnic bench looks like it's a popular one I mean lots of different picnic tables easy to build picnic table homemade picnic table how to make a picnic bench free picnic table how to build picnic tables so what I would pull out of this post is I would say that we need to build some scroll feeders and we need to build a picnic table and create a blog post tutorial how to off of each of those. I also would probably create some roundups for some of these more generic posts. So maybe I will create an Amazon affiliate post that is just the best cheap picnic tables under, I don't even know how much picnic table costs, but let's say under $200 and it would just all be affiliate links. And then I would also create one that was the best squirrel feeders under $40 and make that a whole post. So I have ideas for how-to posts and I have some ideas for roundup posts. Now let's do this one more time and see one more example. Of this example, I'm just gonna put the X next to page and I should lose that page filter. There we go. Um, so now I'm gonna scroll down in queries and I'm gonna find my next most popular post so I tabbed over to the pages tab and our next most popular post is patching drywall when you remove a phone jack random okay so you can see that page became a filter up at the top automatically so I can toggle back to queries and see the queries that we rank for so this time I'm gonna leave it at 10 rows per page because making it 500 was slow you do what you need to do. So you can see we're ranking number one for how to remove a phone jack from the wall. It's not a super high traffic post for us, but it is a nice steady flow. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to toggle the position. So I'm seeing what we rank really poorly for. 
and I'm gonna pull the impressions. So I hit the impressions first and then the position and you can just kind of scroll down and if you see something that has a big number for position but higher impressions, that's gonna be even better. So one impression, you know, that might not be a highly searched term but this one's three. When I'm ranking for 101, I'm already getting three impressions. Three isn't a lot, but it's the highest on this page. I might take note of this. How to install a telephone jack. So if Google thinks we are experts on how to remove a telephone jack, how to install a telephone jack is probably a pretty good idea for us to do too. Let's see, I'll keep toggling through. Old time wall phone. Okay, that could be an idea. Old time wall phones. Maybe some people are feeling nostalgic. Maybe I could create an Amazon affiliate roundup post of old timey wall phones. Here's a bunch more. Landline phone wires. How to hook up a phone line. That kind of goes with the other one. Jack in the box closing. I don't think I have anything to say about Jack in the box. Ooh, okay, here we go. 15 old wall phones. Old wall phones. I wonder what that could be about. So that would be something that I would go off and Google and see when you search old wall phones, what is popping up number one, two, and three? Could I write a comparable article? And here's another really good one. This is half of that post is removing the phone jack and covering the hole in the wall. So maybe we should write a whole post just about covering the hole in the wall. We could write a post. We could create a video how to to link on YouTube. Maybe we could, could you use these like patch kits to patch holes in drywall? Maybe I should be doing a Amazon Roundup blog post about different patch options and the pros and cons of each. Or post just called the best wall patch kit for your home. See, I've come up with a bunch of ideas and I've only looked at like 15 options here. So you can just keep going through and write down anything that comes to you. And then however you organize your workload, I use Trello, I have lots of lists. Just throw your blog post ideas on your to-do list. And as you have time, let's get these written. All right, now let me show you just how I would, once I was going to create one of these posts, how I would make it a really good thorough post and I am going to use this homemade picnic table as a trial post to research and see what we could put in a homemade picnic table post so you can remember I found this one this was the worst position Actually, I think this was page two this is one of the worst positions it had three impressions but homemade picnic table some people are searching for that it's related to our squirrel picnic table so I'm gonna go to Google and just search homemade picnic table let's see what we see so at the top these are all things for sale not homemade <laughs> the biggest really first clip here is a video so that tells me that Google is really prioritizing videos for this so if I'm gonna make a post about a homemade picnic table I better make a video you can see I have keywords everywhere over here I'm not uh, loading any metrics, but you can see just some simple keywords that are already trending. So maybe I want to make a two by four picnic table, um, a picnic table with detached benches, a six foot picnic table, octagon picnic table. You know, if we really want to build a bunch of picnic tables, these are some really good ideas and we could become like the picnic table blog. I scroll down here. So after the video, look at how much real estate this is. This is all sponsored. Then there's a giant video and then it's just images. So I need to have really good images and I need to make sure that I'm filling in all those descriptive words with keywords like homemade picnic table. And here Google is just feeding me some more ideas. Wood, steel, folding, easy, outdoor, rustic, heavy duty. These are all words that I should be writing down and I should be including not only in my post title, within the post, within the image descriptions, all of those places you want to use these words. Then I scroll down, then I see one post. This is from the Spruce. So I honestly probably wouldn't target this specific keyword. I would find something a little bit more narrowed down because the spruce is like Wikipedia for DIY projects. But then I get to people also ask. I would make each one of these questions probably an H3 header at the end of my post. 
How do you make a homemade picnic table? How do you make a picnic table out of wood? How much does it cost to build a picnic table? What kind of wood should I use for a picnic table? These two at the end could honestly be their own post. I could write a whole post about the different types of wood that you could use to make a picnic table. And look, Honker already did that. But that's definitely something I could write a post on. As you click, you get more and more. I would incorporate all of these as either headers on my post or as their own post that I would link. So you can see how we are starting to create the branches of that content tree. So we started with my squirrel picnic table. Now we're sort of sidestepping to how to build a picnic table, but Google trusts me about picnic tables already. So this is on brand. When I write how to build a picnic table, I'm going to go back to my squirrel picnic table post and say, want to build a picnic table for yourself? Make sure to click over and check out our post about link how to build a homemade picnic table. From the homemade picnic table, I might link out and say, wondering what kind of wood you should buy? Go and check out my post about link what kind of wood I should use for a picnic table. These are the kind of things that you're going to do to create branches and branches and branches, all branching off of this content that you didn't just randomly pull out of your butt. It's something that Google is telling you that they trust you on, that you are an authority on, and they want to show people your content about. This is how you find things that are going to instantly rank. So you can keep drilling through. People always ask, also ask. Here you finally get to the posts. So you can see like people had to kind of dig to get down to the posts. So definitely videos, and then here's more searches related to the homemade picnic table. These are topics that you might want to focus on, or like, I don't want to build eight picnic tables. We don't have space for that. We don't have time for that. We have a one-year-old. We can build one picnic table, but that's about as far as it's going to get. But I could do a roundup post, and I could do a roundup of square picnic table plans or octagon picnic table plans and find some of my friends, get their permission to include their content and go ahead and say, you know, the 10 best free square picnic table plans for you to build today and make that its own blog post. Link it back to my picnic table, link that back to the squirrel picnic table and we're starting to really, really build up a nice, healthy, sturdy, juicy, trustworthy, expert tree for Google. Cool. Y'all hype? I'm hype. I gotta go make a picnic table, I guess. All right, guys. I hope that that was a helpful, quick little tutorial for you. I challenge you to hop on over to Google Search Console, pull up your top two, three posts, and make big lists of other topics you can write about. Don't forget how-tos, Amazon affiliate, or what other affiliate program you use. Anything you want to use. It doesn't have to be Amazon. Amazon's just easy for beginners. Affiliate Roundup roundup of projects on the web. Don't forget to include your own projects and your own posts, recipes, whatever you write about. Include those in any roundups you create. That's very important. And create those branches, lots of different topics, lots of different types of posts. Build up that authority with Google. Go ahead and schedule. Say, I'm going to be the picnic table guy and I'm going to put out two posts a month for the rest of the year that have to do with picnic tables. Write them now, schedule them out, Forget about it. Move on to the next topic. Write those. Schedule them out. Forget about it. Before you know it, you are just going to be raking in the Google content clicks. And Google clicks make some of the most money on RPMs. Google clicks, you don't have to worry about Pinterest cutting you off or wanting you to promote things. Google clicks are my favorite kind of clicks. So I hope this was helpful. You can email me, message me, reach out, let's chat. Tell me what else you want me to make a video about. I am all yours. Have a good one. Bye.